But if you do one, gotta do a good one. Don't do a generic one, that, that'll work against you. Better to have no cover letter than a generic cover letter. So if you are doing one, uh, the point is to tell the employer who you are and why they should hire you. It's a little short story out there. A, a very, very, very short story about yourself and why you are that ideal candidate for that job. So you're going to pick a couple of highlights. Not what you think are your highlights, but what you think they think will be your highlights. So get inside that employer's head again. Read that job description. Choose the couple of things that you're going to mention based on that job description. Give them what they want. Um, by doing it, a well-written cover letter it shows you're motivated. This part can be very important, and you have done your research. We almost got into this a bit ago talking about how can I research an employer. Google is one way. Uh, I've even heard of going to business journals and seeing if there's any recent news about that employer. Taking that recent news, oh, I've heard you're planning on expanding to the East Coast in the next quarter, the second quarter of next year. You throw that into your cover letter and like, whoa, wow, this person's actually on the ball. They're, they know what we're up to and they're learning about us. That person's pretty motivated. Almost doesn't matter what you're saying as long as it shows you're doing your research. So if you can add that to a cover letter, that can be pretty cool. You just want to speak to that employer directly. That makes it specific, not generic. Um, Applications, they are what they are. Like I said, sometimes you can't avoid putting stuff you'd rather not down on an application. Resumes and cover letters, though, those are your babies. You don't have to put anything down on a resume that you don't want to. On a resume, you should never put anything down like that. Cover letter, though, if you know that there's some kind of issue with your career history or otherwise that that employer is going to know about, that's the key. If you think they're not going to know about it, let sleeping dogs lie. Don't mention it. But if you think they're going to know and they're going to have a question, the cover letter can be a chance for you to explain some of this on your own terms. Normally, I'd say you just don't even mention stuff like that. Don't bring it up. Um, but if you think you have to, this is where you want to do it on your own terms. All right? So have that positive story written out there. Um, preferably, though, you don't even want to mention that. The last thing here is a good cover letter demonstrates your communication skills, especially written communication skills. Some employers want cover letters solely for that purpose. They don't really care what you say. They want to know how you say it and how you express yourself. So again, you want to do a good job if you're going to do a cover letter. The nuts and bolts, I like to think of it as a school essay. I don't know if anybody remembers back to their school days having to do an essay in history class, something like that. Ugh, you had bad memories probably. But the format's almost the same though. You've got your introductory paragraph, the main body of your argument, and the conclusion. And that works pretty darn well for cover letters as well. I've seen some fancy stuff like the T cover letter that was a fad about five years ago where you're bulleting out stuff in the job description, bulleting out how you match. That's what the resume's for. People, I, I think employers got sick of it, so I would not recommend doing the T cover letter anymore. But uh, just you know, tried and true, that still works. Um, as long as you're giving them what they want. So explain who you are, which position you want, and why, why you're gonna be a good fit for that. Uh, the body is where you're gonna share some of those cool highlights that you know, demonstrate that you're the perfect match for this job. Uh, perfect candidate for that specific position. I underline specific because you don't want to show them that you're a great person in general. I mean, they don't care about you in general, unfortunately. You got to show them why you're the best fit for that particular position. So that means tailoring, using keywords and phrases. And again, we'll talk more about that in the resume section. Uh, the final part, the conclusion, short and sweet is my mantra, especially when it comes to the final paragraph. Thank you very much for your time and consideration. I look forward to hearing from you again soon. Something like that. I've heard some people suggest putting this. Uh, I will be communicating with you by phone within two weeks to discuss the interview. No. Do not do that. One time out of 10, maybe it'll pay off. The other nine times, so I would not, again, that's part of being the pushy with the communications. 
If they want to follow up with you, they will. Make sure your contact information is clear and then get a hold of you. But I, again, I would just thank you very much. We'll leave it at that.